this video I'm going to be doing a review for the divergence engine. There's a link to this indicator in the description below. This is another incredibly versatile indicator from Ninza. It allows you to detect divergence on just about anything you can imagine. Um, I've attached the divergence engine to the chart. This is with factory settings. I believe it's just going off a of price right now, looking for divergence. I'm going to leave everything the same except I'm going to disable these swing points. And for the input series, I'm going to choose the volume. So now it will be detecting divergence in volume. So if I click apply, this is what the divergence engine indicator looks like when it's detecting divergence in volume. So I might want to try and clean up these signals just by playing around with the numbers up here in the parameters. Maybe I change the neighborhood price to 5. That cleaned it up a little bit too much, so maybe I'll try a 4. Uh, what happens if I go lower and do a 2? Too many. So we'll stick with 3 there. And let's see what happens if I change the neighborhood plot. So that's looking good. I just moved that up to a 4 from a 3. Uh, this one got us in a little bit earlier. Not so many signals right there. More clear and concise. So I'm going to stick with those settings. I'm also going to change the marker. I want it to say volume. So this is a one minute ES chart from today, September 15th, the New York Open. Uh, this is pre-market right before 9. We get a volume divergence signal and a nice move down. Uh, this is the market open. Nothing really going on as far as divergences until the market drops off. And around 11 we get a bullish volume divergence. Uh, we get a little bit of a move here. It's actually a pretty big move in the ES, five or six points. And then a little bit after 11.30, we get another volume divergence to the downside, and we have a nice move down. So something I like to do with this indicator is to add another instance of the divergence engine. And this time for the input, I'd like to choose a stochastics. And I want to change the marker. This way I can tell the difference between the different signals. So let's click apply here. And now we're getting some more signals on the chart. Uh, this is the stochastic divergence right there. But we could add as many instances of the divergence engine as we wanted and be testing for all different kinds of divergences, whether it be in the MACD or the RSI, the stochastics volume, uh, there's so many different options you could be looking for. Uh, we can see what it would look like on a range chart. This is a 13 range on the ES. Uh, this is right after market open. And if you remember, we did not get any signals around the market open on the one minute chart, but on the range chart, we got a signal right on the open, pretty much a stochastic long signal. Worked out very nice. Here we've got a double divergence signal, a little bit after 10 o'clock, and then a major sell-off. This is for the same day that I was just looking at, September 15. Uh, later on in the day, a little bit after noon, we get a stochastic divergence long. Uh, another great trade. This is a Ninzarenko chart, a 12-4 Ninzarenko chart. This is actually looking pretty good. We have 8.30 come in, some stochastic divergence around 8.30. Nice little move up. Uh, we get a double divergence here after the market open. Uh, nice move up. Later on, right before 11, we have some volume divergence. Uh, nice move down. And then a double divergence to the upside. Nice move up. 
So the Rinko chart is looking good with those settings. Really an infinite amount of ways that you can use this on different time frames, different settings, measuring different divergences. I'm going to add in one more divergence engine indicator here. This time I'm going to check the divergence for the MACD. I'm going to change the markers to reflect the appropriate signal. And now we have some more signals that are looking pretty good. And you see here the text is overlapping because two signals are printing at the same time. So what you can do is change the marker offset. I can make it a little bit lower. So now we can see both signals printed and they're not going to overlap. So here we got an extra bonus divergence signal. Nice move up. And here and here we got double confirmation that there might be a strong move up on the way. Back here we get some more double confirmation on these moves up. That might have helped us out. Here we get a nice double confirmation signal going up and another nice double confirmation signal going down. Now scrolling back into yesterday, early afternoon, a nice double confirmation south there, another double confirmation down, and just a couple of MACD divergence signals here for a nice little move up that we wouldn't have had if we would just have had the volume or the stochastic. So obviously you don't want your charts to be too cluttered with too many signals, but you could definitely pick one or two or three divergence engine signals that worked best for the time frame and the instrument that you trade.